Welcome back to The Ed Show. Governor Mitt Romney is actually trying to defend his decision to omit any mention of our troops in his acceptance speech. Here's the explanation. When you give a speech, you don't go through a laundry list. You talk about the things that uh, you think are important. And I described in my, in my speech my commitment to a strong military, unlike the president's decision to cut our military. And I didn't use the word troops. I used the word military. I, I think they refer to the same thing. Romney says when he gives a speech, he talks about things that are important. He didn't talk about the troops in his acceptance speech. Therefore, by Romney's own definition, he didn't think the troops were very important. 6,473 troops have died in Iraq and Afghanistan. 49,746 Americans have been wounded in those wars over the last 10 years. Suicides among veterans are a serious problem. July set a record for a record high for the number of suicides in the United States military. Then there are the multiple deployments that families go through, the military moms and dads waiting for their spouses to return home. Romney says he spoke to the American Legion and the VFW, but that doesn't cut it. This is the party that practically coined the phrase, we support the troops. This is the party that demonized people who wouldn't wear a flag lapel pin. This is the party that always claimed to have the upper hand on protecting the country and national security and love of country. In accusing President Obama of not being American enough and not loving the country. But Mitt Romney can't bring himself to insert a paragraph about those troops in arms way right now and have been there multiple times in his acceptance speech. I think it is the ultimate disqualifier. Here's Senator John Kerry addressing the issue last night. No nominee for president should ever fail in the midst of a war to pay tribute to our troops overseas in his acceptance speech. Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney was talking about America. They are on the front lines every day defending America, and they deserve our thanks. Tribute is the correct word. Let's turn to John Soltz, chairman of VoteVets.org. John served in Iraq in 2003 and again in 2011. John, your response to the lack of uh, attention given to our troops, and especially our troops, in, in theater right now at the Republican convention. I'm still shocked at, at Governor Romney's response, and I, I can't believe he said that this morning. Uh, in, in regards to what happened at the Republican convention, uh, he has a very, very unpopular position on Afghanistan. I mean, the president's position is unpopular. Mitt Romney uh, does not have a timeline to end the war. He would commit 100,000 100, troops there for an indefinite period of time, basically uh, you know, involved in a, in a, in a a type of insurgency that's more related to the, the future of the Afghan democracy than what happens uh, with American security. I think that's the first thing. He, he's got the neoconservative George Bush uh, advisors around him who frankly never served. In regards to not talking about that at the RNC, I mean, who wants to talk about a policy position that yeah. isn't supported by the military and isn't supported by maybe is only supported by maybe 15 percent of the country? And they didn't even mention or talk about what they were going to do to help all these veterans who are returning home. And that's probably because Governor Romney supporting his running mate's budget, which is an $11 billion cut to veterans and, and, and almost 13 percent compared to what the president is proposing. So in a sense, he supported the budget. But Paul Ryan, $11 billion cuts to the vets by not even mentioning the vets at all and not even mentioning yeah. the, our, our troops in Afghanistan. The, the what message does that send to the men and women in uniform? Oh, it's terrible. I mean, I think the, the larger thing, when you listen to that comment, when he talked about, I mentioned the military, I mean, this is this rep a sort of conservative talking point, you know, weapon systems. And there's always this debate about weapon systems versus taking care of the military. You know, will there be an attempt to go after military pensions? And so when you have the president up there and he's thanking the troops, the actual people that do the work, that's different than the military industrial complex that Mitt Romney's referring to. So just in that microcosm of what he said this morning, uh, you know, on television about laundry lists, well, it's great to know our troops are considered part of a longer laundry list. I mean, if you want to talk about the priorities, they have chosen to talk about the top 2% of Americans who are in a lower tax bracket than half the people who serve the country like I do. Um, and President Obama and the vice president talk about 
the one percent of the people who actually are the troops who go and do the work. And I think there's a huge disconnect about them actually understanding what we do in the military. You think what they did at their convention and what the Democrats did at theirs is a, a very lofty tribute, very sincere, very detailed and uh, connecting it to policy on what they're going to do for veterans and the troops uh, in our military. Do you think that'll affect this election? I think it affects this election with voters who care about the military. So the perception out there, you know, with independent voters or undecided voters or Americans, they, they want to know that these kids have been fighting in a war um, for the past 10 years. And they want to know that they have an administration that's not going to turn their back on them. And that, that, that goes a lot further than just how veterans feel. And I think that's very important. I think the other thing is it connected them to the people. John Kerry was superb last night when he made the statement about ask Osama bin Laden if he's better off today than he was four years ago. It was the largest cheer in the room. And so I think, you know, they focused in on, on things that connect to how Americans felt. When the vice president stood up last night and mentioned the exact number of the amount of troops that were killed and wounded, he has a personal connection to this issue. I think if you, if you talk to, to Bo Biden, he'll tell you his father is his best friend, and they, they, they live that experience together yeah. when Bo went to Iraq. And there's, there's one party that sort of is close in understanding the, the sacrifice of these young men and women who go off and fight. And then you have another party where you have the presidential candidate who says something like, well, my sons are serving the country because they're working for my campaign. And you have a vice presidential candidate who says, well, I know something about war because I voted for it twice in Congress. Yeah. So it plays exactly into their, their sort of inability to communicate to regular Americans and their sacrifice. John Soltz, thanks for your time tonight. Thank Appreciate you. it so much. Women were front and center in Charlotte this week. Will it help in November? President of the National Organization for Women, Terry O'Neill, will weigh in. Then the fight for your right to vote. Find out why Ohio's Secretary of State is apologizing tonight. But what's he going to do? The latest on the Republican voter suppression efforts. That's just ahead. Stay with us.